So we're in a recession. The UK, like other countries, is now in recession. We last saw a small recession in 2020 that was driven by the COVID lockdowns. And this lasted for six months. And the one before that was in 2008. And that one lasted for five quarters. And that ended in mid-2009. And that was driven by the global financial crisis. Since the 1920s, recessions have been quite common. And we usually seem to get one every 10 years if we look at the data. So I wanna talk about the impact the recession's gonna have on first time buyers and property investors and what will happen over the next 12 to 24 months, plus the opportunities and discounts that we're likely to see and how you can take advantage of this information to profit during the recession in 2023. So I think it's important we understand what a recession is. So technically a recession is when the economy shrinks by two, three month periods in a row or quarters and that's measured by gross domestic product, GDP. Companies start to lose money, wages start to drop, and unemployment rises. And the government makes less money on tax that it can use on services such as health and education. The Bank of England believed that we entered into a recession back in the summer of this year, and it's gonna run until mid-2024. And this is gonna be the longest running recession that we've ever had on record since records began in the 1920s. Recessions typically don't last for more than a year. And during that time, unemployment rises, and inflation starts to fall. The Bank of England's job is to keep inflation under control and their target is to get it at that 2% level. They've totally failed at this because inflation right now is at 11.1% and they're blaming this on these three shocks. There was a what we tend to call a supply chain shock in the recovery from COVID. The next shock I would highlight is, is in many ways is the big one, which as you said is Russia, Ukraine. This has had a very big impact uh, in two areas, I would say, energy, and food. And the third one is a domestic shock, which is the tightness of the UK labour market and the fact that the UK labour force has reduced in size relative to the pre-COVID number. And the only tool that the Bank of England have available to them is the interest rate that they can change and just simply put it up or put it down. The latest rate hike of 0.75%, the bank's eighth in a row, has taken borrowing costs to the highest since 2008 and that was when the banking system faced collapse. The bank believes by raising interest rates, it's making borrowing more expensive and encourages people to spend less money. And this eases the pressure on prices and also as part of the natural course of this, brings inflation down. The impact of this is that anyone with a mortgage, a credit card or a personal loan is gonna have less money because they're gonna have to spend more money to service the same loan because their borrowing costs are now going up. So confidence is very important when it comes to house prices and the headlines out there about the recession and the house market is gonna fall anywhere from 7% to 20%. And this is coming from respected market commentators like the banks and the Office of Budget Responsibility. This is all gonna impact people's decision-making. So increased interest rates are gonna impact people's ability to service their loan. And this means that some people may have to sell their property. It also means that people cannot get onto the property ladder because the increased cost now to borrow money, it means that their property that they would like to get is now out of reach. They simply cannot afford to get on the ladder. In a recession, fewer people will be looking to buy houses and this impacts demand and therefore house prices. And that changes the market from a seller's market down to a buyer's market. And the buyers then are setting the prices for the property the sellers can no longer dictate the price because everything starts to become negotiable and prices start to fall. Then there's the people out there that have to sell no matter what. And this could be driven by their job, could be driven by their personal circumstances or relationship breakdowns and things like that. And so they have to sell their property no matter what. So the Bank of England has done something that it doesn't ever normally do and published some directives in its monetary policy. And it's saying that the bank rate is gonna peak at around 4.5% by autumn in 2023. Then they're forecasting it to come back down to 4% by the end of 2025. So we should be expecting to pay around 5 or 6% mortgage rates over that period of time. This is still a great rate historically, and we've seen that the banks have started to reduce their fixed rates even though the bank rate went up. And this is because the market has started to gain confidence in what the government's starting to do. The Bank of England are forecasting that the inflation rate will fall sharply in the middle of next year. And this will go drop below the 2% target by the end of 2024. The unemployment rate is at its lowest for 50 years right now, 
but this is expected to change and it's, start, it's gonna look like it's gonna get worse over the next two years and they're forecasting that it will go up to 6.4% over the next two years. So let's have a look at the opportunities and the discounts that we're likely to see coming up in the property market. So according to Halifax, the average house price has dropped again. It dropped already in September, only by a small amount, 0.1%, and it's now dropped in October to 0.4%. And I reckon it's likely to continue to happen over the coming time of the recession. We're gonna see that there's gonna be lower demand for houses and therefore for people that do wanna buy, there's gonna be more choice for those people. And we're gonna see that prices are negotiable for the first time in two and a half years. So this is great news for first time buyers and for property investors because we can now cherry pick the best properties that are out there in the location that you're going for. You're no longer gonna to have to pay the sticker price or above the asking price for those types of properties anymore or just take the worst property that's available just to get on the ladder. The properties that are on busy roads and not in great locations now are really gonna to struggle to sell. So one good thing that came out of the List Trust government is that the stamp duty rate changed and that was doubled for first time buyers. So that you could get up to 250,000 pounds without paying stamp duty. So all of the stamp duty rates are still gonna be staying in place until March 2025, but then they're gonna be going back to the old rate. So there's a discount available for everyone, probably investors, any house buyer, first time buyers, on all the stamp duty rates until March 2025. But for sellers who need to sell, it's gonna be a rude awakening, for, especially for those people that think they can price their property at the prices that they were six months ago. That market's disappeared, if you don't price your property correctly, you're gonna be chasing the market down because I think over the next 12 to 24 months, prices will definitely go down. How much down, I don't know. I don't think we'll see a 20% drop or anything like that. So one thing we definitely know is that the bank rate is definitely gonna be going up over the next 12 months. And it's gonna be going up by another one and a half percent. So you should factor that in when you're looking at mortgages and things like that now. So if you can lock in a mortgage that's gonna be say under four and a half percent, which is the bank rate, that will be a good deal because the mortgage lenders are gonna be wanting the mortgages to be above that four and a half percent because the difference is where they make their money. So there's gonna be a delta there of where they're gonna be making their profit. So anything under four and a half percent, that's an opportunity to lock in maybe that rate or even go on a tracker if you wanna make take advantage of the fact that the rates are going to be coming down again to that four percent over a period of time as well swings and roundabouts you make a decision based on what's right for you at that time because with fixed rates you're tied in and you get penalty clauses where you have to pay a penalty amount of interest to get out of them so only go into those if you know that you're definitely going to be having that house for that fixed period of time. I've got this real problem right now with my commercial mortgages in that they're all variable rate and the fixed rate that I'm being offered is NAF and I'm going to be up for a 3% fee to change them to a fixed rate from a variable rate which I'm not wanting to do and so I'm just going to ride it out because the rates are going to go up and they're going to come down again. Just ride it out for me. That's my own personal view on what I'm going to be doing just because the commercial mortgage rates are not that great, but residential buy selects, you can get a lot better deals. As always, cash is king and there's no better a time to have cash available than in a recession. And this is because you can take advantage of any opportunities or discounts that are available to you as you kind of, these things kind of come up. So what I'm personally doing is building up my cash reserve and I encourage you to do the same. Make sure you've got some kind of emergency fund available for anything that goes wrong. And that should be something like a couple of months worth of your living expenses. So if any big items happen, boiler breaks down, anything big happens, you're not having to scramble for the money, you've got that emergency fund of cash reserves available you can just dip into. Now also try and reduce your expenses as much as possible. And I've got this one hack for you about how I go about this. And this hack is called the double shore. Now, you're out in the pub with your friend and you bought a round of drinks. And you say, I'll pay for this one. And your friend goes, no, I'll get this one. And you go, you sure? And he goes, yeah, I'm sure I'll get this one. And you just simply go, okay then, thanks very much. And they're left downfounded because you didn't do the double you're sure, you just said, okay then. 
So this way, you can save you a bit of money, and also you wanna be creating a monthly plan about how much your expenses are costing you each month and understanding how much money you can start to save and put that money away in your emergency fund and to be ready to buy your next property when that opportunity comes around the corner. And most importantly, don't take on any more consumer debt. Make sure if you can, pay all off your credit cards. Cost of borrowing money right now is very expensive. It's the most expensive it's been since 2008 and it's only gonna get more expensive over the coming 12 months. So build up a cash reserve fund so you're ready for when that property opportunity comes around and you can pounce on it. I'm certainly not being put off by the market at all and I definitely will be looking to buy a property in 2023. And I'm particularly looking for properties where I can manufacture some profit. So I'll be looking for properties that I can buy that are in need of modernization, doing the repairs to it, doing the refurbish to it, adding value, pulling my money out and doing it again and again and again. And this is what I plan to do in 2023. There's gonna be discounted properties in 2023 and it's your job to go out there and find those properties and make the most of those properties because it's gonna be the return of below market value deals again. And your job is to make plenty of offers on all of those properties. Never accept the asking price, never pay asking price anymore during a recession. Everything's negotiable. So I recently posted a question in my community tab about me analyzing your deals. And a massive amount of you responded. There was 19 votes, <laughs> but it was amazing that 84% of you said yes, I'd love that idea. So I'm gonna go ahead with a concept and see what happens. So I'm gonna analyze any of your deals, whoever puts them forward. And that can be that you've got it as a pre-purchase at the moment, or you've already completed on a deal and you wanna understand where you should take it, how to maximize the best use for that property. Happily analyze them, may come and see you and walk through the numbers with you, analyze the property together, and then publish it on my YouTube channel. Everything will be treated in strictest confidence. So it's up to you what you wanna share, what you don't wanna share. Obviously, certain amount of information I'll need to be able to analyze the deal the best way for you. So I'm looking forward to that and seeing where that goes. So thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.